Hello everyone. Hallelujah. I'm sharing the teaching of Apostle Joshua Silman for the body of Christ. I pray that it will give a great impact to each and every one of us as a body of Christ. We need this teaching, this kind of teaching that God will give us a great hunger to seek Jesus Christ. Our Lord there are many people in church who have not met Jesus there are many people around Christian circles who have truly not had an encounter with Jesus you can be around the things of God you can even be part of the move of God but an encounter with Jesus is not corporate number one it is a personal affair those days well in the south here i think it was student union and then in the north it was fcs they would ask you do you have a personal relationship with jesus that word personal was the key word not have you been around church for a while a personal encounter with the lord jesus first john chapter 5 the epistle of john first john chapter 5 help us holy spirit first john chapter 5 we'll start from verse 11 first john 5 and 11 this is the record that god had given us eternal life and that this life is in his son next verse please it says he that hath the son had life and he that had not the son of god had not life period so if you say you are born again then that must have been that you have encountered the son of the living god the savior of the world can i tell you this we need by the grace of god to remind a generation again that there is no other name given unto man by which men can be saved believing a man of god does not give you salvation brothers and sisters hear me believing a living church does not give you salvation believing an apostle a prophet following an apostle a prophet a teacher as important as it is you are only an effective follower you are not saved are we together according to the authority of scripture the condition for being a partaker of the life of god is not proximity with the anointing it's not proximity with church it's a personal encounter with the son of the living god you will think what i'm teaching is so basic and simple and everyone should know except for the fact that the day there is a day that this earth will be judged and let me tell you whoever does not have that encounter with the son of god he says i saw that the sea gave up its dead everyone gave up his dead and whosoever's name was not in the book of life was casted into the lake of fire that burned with sulfur and brimstone this he said is the second death and he said right for these things are faithful and true i don't mean to make you afraid but i tell you sincerely one day this earth will wrap up the lord jesus christ is coming we establish this in the future in, in in the morning and it's not going to be in so distant future i am convinced personally from the authority of scripture because the one sign the bible gives to characterize the coming of christ is that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all generations they don't have to receive it it there just has to be a testament that they had it and the bible says then the end will come an encounter with the son of the living god john chapter 10 and verse 10 says the thief cometh not that means you will never see the thief around any vicinity but for to steal to kill and to destroy and he said but i am come that ye may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly so the first encounter you need that starts your journey your christian experience more than church more than a pastor more than a man of god is an encounter with the son of the living god we are all sons of the living god but there is the son of the living god jesus the christ there is no other name given unto men 
by which we must be saved respectfully do you know that you can do a random selection around church and really ask people are you saved and you will be surprised how many people are not saved they are committed they are sincere they are not evil people but they are just not saved sincerity is not the condition to be with jesus it is salvation romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 the word is nigh thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thy heart that god raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved the formula is in the next verse with the heart man believes unto righteousness then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation hallelujah there are three things that you receive for having an encounter with the son of the living god please write it according to the authority of scripture if and when you truly have an encounter with the son of the living god there are three things that you receive number one access to righteousness romans chapter 5 and verse 17 these are fundamentals of the christian faith that if not known every other dimension of truth will be standing on a wrong foundation romans 5 and verse 17 please access to righteousness for if by one man's offense death reigned by one it says much more we they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ righteousness great men like ew kenyon who had been a great blessing to the body of christ and still continue to bless the body of christ even though they have long gone i think he defined one of my first definitions of righteousness came from his books the ability to stand before the father's presence without a sense of inferiority condemnation and guilt that's what he defined as righteousness even though today i would say righteousness is more than just a sense of being free righteousness is actually the nature of god without righteousness you cannot receive the way the condition to have the life of god is that you have righteousness equal to that of jesus so before you receive the life of god you must receive righteousness righteousness is what qualifies you to be a partaker of the life of god it is impossible to have the life of god until you have righteousness are we blessed the first thing we receive from having an, a genuine encounter with the son of god is righteousness the righteousness of the son of the living god at work in me that i have received it number two the second thing that we receive when we have an encounter with jesus the son of the living god is access to the life of god what the bible calls zoe the life of god zoe is more than eternal life please look up there are different kinds of life and some of you may have heard me teach that zoe is not eternal life everybody has eternal life the condition for eternal life really is not being born again it's being born once you pass through the womb of a woman you have eternal life whether in this earth or beyond this earth you are still living the life is eternal when you get people saved you say where will you spend eternal life not will you you are going to spend eternal life the question is location not the possibility are we together now remember jesus we are bible students isn't it remember jesus was talking to he was giving a parable about the rich man and lazarus both of them had eternal life it was just location the man was still alive after this earth so the life jesus came to give us i know that it was translated eternal life but it's not really eternal life it's called zoe the life of god is a quality of life the very kind of life great men like papa hagin call it the god kind of life well i respect and i believe them but revelation is progressive it's not the god kind it is the very life of god there are not many kinds 
it is God's life given to men are we blessed a superior kind of life this is what I get when I encounter the son of the living God now because it is spiritual in nature you may not appreciate it we are sensory so when things happen and you have a physical impact usually you will believe it but when you when you receive of his life in what you call the salvation experience usually you may not necessarily feel anything physical so it may be difficult for you to believe that a translation and an exchange just happen in the spirit but it is still the truth of scripture that anyone who encounters the son of god has the life of god please say i have the life of god number three what do you receive for having an encounter with the son of god access to the grace of god hmm. access to the grace of god access to the grace of god Ephesians chapter 1 please and verse 3 the grace of God is a powerful mystery this is my definition of the grace of God blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ this is my definition of grace grace is more than just unmerited access grace is the generic name given to every spiritual blessing that is given to the believer routed through the office of the christ is called grace so anointing is grace wisdom is grace faith is grace all spiritual blessings that have been given to the saints but can only be accessed through the office of the Christ is called grace when you limit your understanding of grace to just um, unmerited access or being pardoned from iniquity by reason of being in Christ it is very very limiting so when we have access to grace it's more than just favor uh -uh. that's why the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you and then the Bible says that um, how, how does he put it? he says God is able to make all grace I think I shared that the last time I was here the grace of God unfortunately and and lovingly speaking for most believers our our understanding of grace just has to do with the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ and receiving it and then, and then that's all but grace is more than that grace represents every spiritual blessing allocated for the victory of the saints but it is only routed in Christ an unbeliever cannot have grace can have mercy but not grace are we blessed the grace of God only comes through the office the administrator of the grace of God is Christ himself is God helping us now so if you tell me you have encountered Jesus I search for this notice my choice of words access to righteousness access to the life of God access to the grace of God what does access mean potential it does not mean experience access means that the door has been opened but it is up to you to come into the experience of it for instance we have received the way the life of god but ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness that is in their heart so it is true that he that had the son had life but because it is access it takes a level of spiritual illumination to come into the experience of it this is where faith is applicable so it is by grace but then through faith to become our experience are we blessed many believers continue to chant 
spiritual realities that the grace of god has provided and sometimes we never get to walk into the experience of it because grace gives you access and access is important but that's not what you really need what you need is an experience